life in this town called Nazareth. And before we start this morning, I invite you to pray with me as we begin. Lord, that song says a lot, and Lord, there's a lot of beauty in singing to you, our Redeemer. And as we think about where you grew up, I ask that what we learn will help us understand even more how much we need you in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. If Jason just went through the list of all the topics that we went through this weekend, and there was no day six. And I began to pray and ask God, and I thought, well, that's, that's one of the, the uh, last things to talk about. We talked about his family, his home, his name, the church he went to, and how he served. But Nazareth itself, Nazareth itself provides for us a question, why did Jesus grow up in Nazareth? This is an important question, and the Bible answers it. And the answer is found in John chapter 1, verses 43 through 46. It's in the screen, because I want us to get the context as to why there? Why not in Jerusalem? Why not somewhere closer to where the temple was? Why this town called Nazareth? In John chapter 1, verses 43 through 46, this question as to why did Jesus grow up in Nazareth is answered for us. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him, of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael, all that he heard was one word, and he responds to that. Nathanael said to Philip, can anything good come out of where? Now, is he really asking this question or is he making a statement? What is the obvious answer Nathanael is expecting from this question? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And the answer would be no. Are there towns around here, counties, that you would you could say nothing good is going to come out of there. I was studying this past uh, Thursday with a couple that they just moved to a new neighborhood. And he told me, we try to make it home before the sun goes down. Because we, the first week we were in our new place, the gas station in the corner was being held up. And I was driving home, and the guy that just robbed the gas station jumped on top of my hood and jumped over my car because cops were chasing him. And we could say, man, can anything good come out of that neighborhood? Maybe the cops, as they're running after the crooks, right? Well, that's Nazareth. The answer to the question, can anything good come out of Nazareth, was absolutely no. That's what Nathaniel was expecting. And that's why Jesus chose to grow up there. Jesus grew up in Nazareth so he could change that answer. Jesus grew up in Nazareth so that when people would ask, can anything good come out of Nazareth, the answer would be, oh yes, Jesus. Jesus changes the answer to that question. And we can ask that question about areas of Los Angeles, New York, Argentina, um, the earth. But I think that question gets asked more frequently about people. Can anything good come out of so-and-so? Can anything good come out of that person's life? And I think that's why Jesus grew up in Nazareth, to answer those questions. And this morning, I want to spend some time looking at some people's lives. The first person that we're going to look at, it's a well-known story. Children have a song about this gentleman named Zacchaeus. How many of you guys know about Zacchaeus or heard about Zacchaeus or sang a song about Zacchaeus? How tall was Zacchaeus? Wee little man. I kind of like Zacchaeus because next to him I will be a wee tall man. In Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, you can read it um, after Sabbath. You can take a note of reading the scripture. Zacchaeus, 
Let me tell you a little bit about him from, from these passages. Number one, he was a chief tax collector. He wasn't just a regular tax collector, but he oversaw a group of tax collectors. And the Bible says that he was very rich. And he was very rich not because he did an honest job. He collected taxes from his own Jewish people to give to the Roman Empire. And he discovered something. He could threaten people and collect more money that he wasn't supposed to. When you take something that doesn't belong to you, what is that called? Zacchaeus was a thief. And he stole from his own people. If we were to ask the question, can anything good come out of Zacchaeus, what would be the answer? Jesus sees Zacchaeus in the tree and tells him to come down. He's going to go into his house, and Zacchaeus is surprised. And when people see the neighbors, Zacchaeus' neighbors, see Jesus go into Zacchaeus' house, the Bible tells us that they began to complain, all of them. All the neighborhood complained that Jesus was a guest of a man who was a sinner. So if I went, hey, are you Zacchaeus' neighbor? Yes. How long have you known him? All my life, unfortunately. Could anything good come out of Zacchaeus? The answer would be no. Actually, don't talk to him. He'll start asking you questions about whether you paid your taxes or not. Everything is money with him. He even extorts his own mother. Can anything good come out of that man? Jesus went into Zacchaeus' home and changed the answer to that question. The Bible tells us that when Jesus went into Zacchaeus' house, Zacchaeus all of a sudden stands up from the dinner table and says, Lord Jesus, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore it four times as much. And Jesus is smiling. Now to the question, can anything good come out of Zacchaeus? There was a different answer now, wasn't it? Before, there was selfishness, a cold-hearted person, self-centered, like when our brothers or sisters ask us to play with our birthday toy, right? Our new bicycle. And our neighbor friend says, can I ride it? And we say, Gianna is, is learning to not be like Zacchaeus before he met Jesus. Because she got a new scooter. And when she were putting it together, we have a little friend across the street. Her name is Yirsa from Albania. She speaks less English than Gianna, but they get along great. And the first thing that Gianna said was, I can't share this with her. Because it's... That was Zacchaeus' motto for life. It's mine. But after he meets Jesus, Zacchaeus becomes generous. Zacchaeus becomes honest. Zacchaeus finds joy in sharing. Isn't that a wonderful change? See, that's why Jesus was born in Nazareth. Because Nazareth had a reputation that when people would ask, can anything good come out of Nazareth, the obvious answer was no. But because Jesus grew up in Nazareth, he changed that answer. When people would ask that question about Zacchaeus, it was the same thing. But Jesus changed the answer to Zacchaeus because he changed Zacchaeus. Amen? There's another person in the Bible named Mary, and you can find her story in John chapter 8, verses 2 through 10. In John chapter 2 through 10, we are in church in, this, in these passages. It is quiet, it's in the morning, people are praying, and all of a sudden you see here someone screaming, and men, get her here, come on, grab her, don't let her get away, and boom, they throw her in front of Jesus, and this woman is between this big mob of religious people and Jesus. And they're telling Jesus, this woman has been caught in adultery. We are ready, Lord. We got nice stones. Should we store her? Yes or no? The Bible says yes. What do you say? Mary had made a lot of bad choices. The Bible doesn't say anything about her parents, so maybe she grew up maybe without her parents. Maybe she raised herself. And maybe she grew up starving for love. 
And maybe she started chasing boys, right? Boyfriends, certainly they're going to make me happy. And maybe she started chasing pleasure. Maybe she thought fun and things that are fun, those are the things that are going to make me happy. And she started making bad choices. And she never imagined in her early 20s she would be facing death. And if we were to talk about the people that saw Mary as she walked down the streets, those men and women that just hang out in the street to see who's passing by, back in those days they didn't have Facebook, that's the essential, the same thing, right? We look at what other people are doing. These people would say, hey, what do you say about Mary? Can anything good come out of Mary? And the answer would have been, no. Do you know why she dresses so nice? <laughs> She's not married. She makes money doing some horrible things. No, nothing good can come out of Mary. But Jesus steps into her life, and Jesus defends her. Jesus tells all these righteous people, well, if none of you guys have ever sinned, go ahead, throw the first stone. And everybody goes, blunk. I can't do that. Not in front of Jesus. When everybody leaves, Jesus looks at the woman and says, um, you can look up now. Where are those people that were condemning you? Where are they? I don't know. Well, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more, my child. And that was the first encounter, the first of many encounters Jesus had with Mary. And the change in Mary was so powerful that the Bible says that when Jesus died, she was one of the few disciples that was still by the cross. And Sunday morning, when all the macho men, you know, Peter included with the sword, were all hiding, trembling out of fear, she was out there ready to anoint the body of Jesus. Didn't know how she was going to roll the stone, but she went. See, Mary grew up seeking for pleasures, thinking that's going to be fun, and I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy, and fun certainly will make me happy. I'm getting used to people using me, using me for my beauty, using me for whatever. And I don't expect really people to care for me, but that's okay. As long as I'm having fun, fun makes me happy. Mary grew up independent from God. She knew those were the things that she did were not right, but she chose them anyways. She was starving for love, and she was choosing them even from bad relationships. But she met Jesus... And she discovered what really made her happy. There was a purpose for her existence. There was a purpose beyond who she grew up to be, what people said about her. Jesus changed the answer of Mary. She learned that she was called to be a daughter of God. That she, did, she was not a slave to what other people would say about her. And that she did not need to crave from humans a love that can only come from God. She finally found herself complete in need of no one else except of God. She realized every morning, I used to get up and think, I don't need God. Who needs God? Why do I need God for? I'm doing just fine. But that day at the temple, she realized, my life's a mess. Can anything good come out of my life? Jesus changed the answer for Mary because Jesus changed Mary. And that's why Jesus grew up in Nazareth, because Nazareth had the reputation. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And the answer is, but Jesus changed the answer to Nazareth, and he changed the answer to Mary as well. There's someone else named Peter. These are stories we're very familiar with. In Mark chapter 14, verses 61 through 72, we get a real glimpse of Peter's heart. Jesus has told them already what's going to happen, but when it happens, Peter runs away, and he's following Jesus from a distance. And Jesus has just answered the questions to the high priest. Are you the Messiah? And when Jesus says, I am, Peter could hear. It's as if Peter is here, and Jesus is in the balcony with the windows open, and he's hearing the people screaming as they go to Jesus. And he can hear the, the smacks and the slaps and, and the thuds and the pushing and the growling. And he knows that his Savior, Jesus, his Master, is, is getting heavily physically abused. 
And in the middle of that noise and the commotion of someone getting beat up, a servant girl says to Jesus, you were one of his followers too, weren't you? And what does Peter do? No. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you're talking about. And then the servant girls ask him again. And then the other people ask him again. And three times Jesus sa Peter says, I don't know him. I don't know what you're talking about. The passage finished the saying that Peter thought about these things, went out and wept. Peter was a coward with a big mouth, and people like that get in trouble all the time. I know from experience. He betrayed his best friend. You know, there's a pain that comes from being betrayed by a friend. But I think that the pain that comes from betraying a friend is even deeper. You are the one that failed. And Peter is seeing himself for who he really is. And he is asking himself this question. Can anything good come out of me? Can anything good come out of me? When we go and get competitive, when we cheat and lie because we want to win, when we let anger consume us and do things that we wish we hadn't, when we are disrespectful to our parents, when we are mean to our parents, they are our friends. If God's given you good parents that love you, they are your friends, and sometimes we betray our friends. When we do those things, we will ask ourselves, can anything good come out of the choices that I've, I've made? Can anything good come out of me? Jesus doesn't just change the reputation of towns or the lives of people. Through these stories, we begin to see that Jesus changes people. Jesus changes the answers to the questions, can anything good come out of this individual? Not simply by changing the circumstances, but by changing the person themselves. And this St. Peter that trembled at the question from this little girl in the book of Acts he stands boldly to these same people that were beating Jesus. Peter gets in front of them and says, it's better to obey God rather than men, implying them. So to the question about Peter's life, about Peter himself, could anything good come out of Peter? Jesus answers for Peter. I have changed him. He loves me. Zacchaeus, Mary, and Peter. When asked the question, can anything good come out of these people, the answer clearly was no before Jesus. But Jesus changes that answer because he changes people. I want to talk to you about this young man. He's not in the Bible. His name is Taj. He grew up in Hawaii. His mother uh, was reading world culture and saw a picture of the Taj Mahal. You guys know what that is? The Taj Mahal asked Jason to show you his Lego uh, rep replica of the Taj Mahal. Is it, it is the Taj Mahal, right? He, she loved this structure so much that he named, she named her son Taj after this structure. Taj grew up in a broken home, meaning his mom raised him and he never really met his father. Later he found out that his mom almost aborted him. He grew up in a very dysfunctional home. He never went to church. The Bible was never read in his home. And Taj never heard people pray in his home or in his family. At a young age, he began to make some very terrible decisions. And by the age of 10, which is the picture that you see in the screen, Taj began to smoke. And because you need money, he also began to steal. Cigarettes are not free. So Taj figured out how to do all these things and became dependent on cigarettes by the age of 10. When he went to high school, he understood high school was a school where you went to get high. That's how he defined it jokingly. Because in high school, he was known as the chronic, as the pothead. He went from smoking cigarettes to smoking marijuana heavily. He thought he was chasing fun and pleasure like Mary, but he was escaping the pain and the hurt 
of not wondering why his dad was not there. And angry, so much anger inside of him. And things got worse. His mom began to realize, my son is going to self-destruct unless something happens. And his mom started doing something she had never done before. She began to pray. And things got worse. Taj discovered girls. He discovered that girls liked him and began to chasing after girls as well. And it was when Taj was 16 years old. I don't know if you can tell, but if you see the picture, um, his eyes are red. And that's how his eyes were all the time, bloodshot. It is not from lack of sleep. We know something about why people get the eyes like that. That was Taj's life. And by the age of 16, he was getting ready to go into juvie, just waiting to get caught. And if you would have asked the question, can anything good come out of Taj? The answer is obvious. 16 years old, his mom and Taj were in front of the television watching, and a commercial came inviting people to come to a Bible prophecy seminar. They looked at each other. Sure. What do we have to lose? So the mom and Taj went, and Taj began to hear about this Jesus of Nazareth. This Jesus that changes the answer to the question, can anything good come out of this? Can anything good come out of my broken family? Can anything good come out of me being addicted? Can anything good come out of the hatred and the anger? Can anything good come out of the decisions that I've made so far? The more the meetings went, the more Taj began to realize something was changing inside of him. Jesus was changing Taj. The same Jesus that changed Zacchaeus, the same Jesus that changed Mary, and the same Jesus that changed Peter was the same Jesus changing Taj. And at the age of 16, Taj became a child of God by choice. And he gave himself so wholeheartedly, he was so excited about this change inside of him. Went to school, his high school, in Oahu, Hawaii, the Nanakuli High School. And during lunchtime, he took his Bible to school and began to invite his old weed-smoking friends to come and study the Bible. And he began to have Bible studies during lunchtime in high school. And he didn't know anything. He wasn't trained. He, he, was not, he didn't receive any special training to do this. He did not know a lot of theology, but he knew Jesus that changed him. And he began to change, share that with his friends. And by the end of the school year, six of his friends with their families also got baptized. He began to feel this restlessness as he finished high school. The restlessness of a calling. Taj began to discover what made him truly happy. And it wasn't the girls, and it wasn't the drugs, and it wasn't the lifestyle, and it wasn't being against God. It wasn't leaving God out of the picture. If anything, Taj began to discover leaving God out of the picture has made me miserable. And he has confirmed the answer. Could anything good come out of my life? No, it just keeps getting worse. But now that I have Jesus in my life, he discovered true happiness because he discovered the purpose for his existence. Taj, by the age of 18, he was made personal ministry leader in his church in Oahu, and he was made elder of the church, which means that to be an elder, you don't have to be old. Amen? Just because the word says elder, you shouldn't wait until you're older. Amen? Also, it means that when nominating committee calls you, you should say yes. Amen? <laughs> hint, hint. This is what Taj had to say about himself when the church asked him to be personal ministries director. And for those of you who don't know, personal ministries director are people that coordinate church members so that they give Bible studies to other people. That's all they do. And Taj was also continuing to give Bible studies to all his old friends. He would tell them about Jesus of Nazareth, the Jesus that changes the answer to the question about our lives. Can anything good come from the divorce? 
Can anything good come from the choices I've made? This Jesus of Nazareth changes the answer because he changes people. Taj decided one day to go to this school in uh, Arkansas called Southwest. And there he received some training on how to share Jesus more effectively. And after doing so, he was hired by the California Conference as a full-time evangelist. And Taj began to find himself that I can't believe that there's a job that actually does this for a living. And he began to discover the joys of seeing other people experience what life looks like after Jesus changes the answer to that question. Can anything good come out of your life through Jesus? It can. And people began to experience healing in their marriages, healing in their families, healing in their own personal lives, in their hearts. And Taj could not believe he would do this every day for the rest of his life. But deep inside Taj's heart was a burden for his own family, especially a burden for his grandpa. And he began to pray. Lord, I'm here traveling all over the United States and sharing the gospel of Jesus of Nazareth and my own family. And the invitation came to go and do a series in Oahu. And he invited his grandpa personally. Him and his, his grandpa and grandfather had separated years before. Horrible breakup, very painful. But the grandfather now was seeking. He realized all the wrong things he had done that had cost him his marriage. He wished he could take back. And so when his grandson said, Grandpa, would you come and just hear me speak? The grandpa said yes, not because he wanted really to hear about Jesus, but because he was proud that as people were akin, he could boast and say, that's my grandson. That's my grandson up there. But what he did not expect was to be introduced to this Jesus that would revolutionize his life. I don't need to tell you what happened by the end of those meetings. It was one of the most touching experiences for Taj. His grandfather had been one of the first people to hold him when Taj had been born. His and his grandfather had a, such a strong bond. The moment Taj was born into this earth, his grandpa held his grandson so proudly, so joyfully. But now it was Taj's turn to hold his grandpa as his grandpa was born again in Jesus Christ. Complete turnaround. A pothead kid having the answer to his life's end changed through Jesus of Nazareth. That's why Jesus was born in Nazareth. Because Nazareth had a bad reputation. And Jesus would change that reputation forever. He changes Mary. He changed Peter. He changed Zacchaeus. And he changed Taj. So much so that he started talking to the grandma. And the grandma was hard-hearted by this point. I don't want to do nothing with your grandpa. You have no idea how much he's hurt me. I may not, grandma, but Jesus does. And he does not want you to live with that anger and that hatred forever. Come and hear about Jesus. It took years for grandma to finally accept. But before grandma got married, uh, got baptized, they had talked to Taj. And both of them said, thank you for introducing us to Jesus of Nazareth. The grandma said, I don't just want to be baptized. We've talked with your grandpa, and we're going to renew our marriage vows. And we want you to officiate. See? Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And the only answer Philip could give him was, come and see. You just have to come and see. And it's because many of us have not gone to see that we still have that question lingering in our minds. How many times have you been invited to study the Bible with someone? That's an invitation to come and see this Jesus of Nazareth. I grew up in the church no one really invited me really to study, even before I got baptized. No one ever show, showed me this Jesus of Nazareth that could change the answers to my life's destiny. Could anything good come out of Ariel? No way. Not until Jesus came into my life. 
The reason I know all these stories in detail is because I don't know Taj personally. I, I was introduced to Taj about three weeks ago as I was watching the general conference worship, morning worships in San Antonio, Texas. I don't know if any of you guys got to see any of them. But I got to hear his testimony. And you can go to YouTube. You can type GC 2015 Taj, T-A-J, Pakleb, P-A-C-L-E-B. And you can hear his sermon in which he shares this testimony that stirred my heart, put tears in my eyes, because he reminded me of why Jesus grew up in Nazareth. You may not be able to change your past, your reputation, your mistakes, your regrets, your pain. All the things that have led us to the obvious answer we have ourselves with today. Can anything good come out of me? Can anything good come out of my life? Can anything good come out of my broken marriage? Can anything good come out of where I am today with Jesus, the Jesus of Nazareth, he changes the answer. This morning, we have seen him change Zacchaeus, Mary, Peter, and Taj. A little broken Hawaiian drug-addicted boy called to speak to the entire worldwide church through a morning message, who would have ever imagined? You don't know what your life can be in Jesus. You just don't have that wild of an imagination to come to even dream about what your life could be with Jesus in it. This morning, I want to invite my young friends, all the ones that were just here this, in the platform, my teenage friends and my adult friends. Like Philip, my invitation to you this morning is come and see. Come and see this Jesus. Come and see Jesus of Nazareth the one who changes the answer. I would like to extend an invitation as the children come forward to sing our closing song. Is there anyone here this morning that would like to study the Bible? Is there anyone here this morning that would like to study the Bible to come to know this Jesus better? Could you raise your hand right now? It's free. If there's anyone here this morning that would like to study the Bible with me, with whoever you want, to come and see this Jesus of Nazareth? Is there anyone that would like to study and come and see who this Jesus is in your life? If you still would like, I, even after the service, please come and see me. Jesus Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, the Jesus that changes the answer, can anything good Come out of our lives, Jesus says yes.
Is Jesus still with us? Jesus of Nazareth still, through his Holy Spirit, through his word, and through his church, still invites human beings to come and see. Why don't we stand together for a closing prayer? Lord, sometimes we see the stories in the Bible to be so far away. It's almost like you only did miracles back then. Thank you, Lord, that that's not the case at all. You have been working miracles in all of our lives, even when we don't recognize you. I want to thank you for Taj's testimony, Lord, that it's just one of the many that say Jesus can change the answer to the question, can anything good come out of our lives? When we are broken and lonely, when we are angry, whatever the situation may be, Lord, that leads us to say nothing good could come out of this. No one can make anything good come out of this. Father, I pray that through your spirit, the invitation would linger in our hearts to come and see, to come and see this Jesus of Nazareth who can change greedy people into generous people that live with no purpose but to have fun, Lord, to have a meaning for cowards, for people that are afraid to be brave, and for young men, Lord, who are angry and hurting, to discover that they are loved, that they have a heavenly Father, even when our family down here fails us. Lord, I pray that through your Spirit, all of us would commit to seeing you more clearly as Jesus of Nazareth, the God who with us, who changes our answers. It is in his name I pray. Amen, Lord. Amen. God bless you.